Gracious and loving God, we come now as your laborers in the vineyard, seeking to hear your message to be transformed in our hearts and in our lives. Gracious Lord, speak unto us this message, whether through me or in spite of me. For this we pray. Amen. I feel like the parable of the vineyard is the perfect parable to capture the kingdom of heaven. First, it contains a message of God's provenient grace. The idea that God is actively out in the world seeking each and every one of us out, reaching out to us. Second, it also contains a cautionary tale for those of us who, who have believed for a long time. A tale that we are not to be jealous of those who, who come to know God late in life, but, but instead to to celebrate them and to realize that our reward in heaven is so vast and so great that it doesn't matter that someone gets the same reward as we As the tale begins, or the parable begins, we, we hear about the vineyard owner, which we can assume is God. And God goes out into the world, and there at the, at the dawn, he finds laborers for his vineyard. Now we could look at this day as being a universal time, in which case dawn might, might have been all of the Old Testament believers, you know, like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all those, those long ago. Or we can look at dawn, and the day is as being a single life. And so dawn is, is birth. And those who God calls there at birth, those cradled Christians, are the first ones to enter into the vineyard to do God's labor. They will be there the, the longest, in theory. But see, God is not content with just having that, that dawn labor crew. God knows that there are more people out there that, that need to be invited into the vineyard, that need to come and, and help be a part of the kingdom. And so at, at the third hour, he goes out again and he finds more laborers. Now, if we're using universal time, maybe this is, is the time of Jesus and the disciples. Or if we're using personal time, maybe this is childhood or youth. But either way, he calls this group of Believers and they come and, and they begin to work in the vineyard. And he goes out again at the sixth hour and the ninth hour. Universally, this could be the early church and Christendom, or it could be Christendom and now. And then you have in personal time, it could be young adulthood and middle age. And he gets all those people and he has them working in the vineyard. But it's still not enough. God still goes out and seeks out more people to come and enter into his vineyard. And so at the eleventh hour he goes out. At the twilight of the day perhaps in the terms of a life our elder years or our deathbeds or you know, near the end in terms of the universal time Maybe the time of resurrection, that, or not resurrection, the time of revelation and that apocalypse time, that, that time right before human existence is transformed for all of eternity into something new, before God makes something new, that 11th hour, that last moment. And he calls them in. And when the day comes to a close, it turns out that those who are called at the end are, are first in line to be given their reward. They, they serve the shortest time. And they're given their reward in, in the story of Denarius. In reality, I think it's referring to heaven itself. And those who are first, those who had, who had labored all day long, 
throng who had, who had been there their entire lives, they also received this denarius or heaven. Now some, some of those cradled Christians are a little envious of the deathbed Christians. They're those vineyard workers from the morning are envious of the twilight workers because they both got the same reward despite having worked that much longer. But I think this speaks to heaven itself. Heaven is an all or nothing proposition. There is no rank and tier and division in heaven. There are no differences in rewards in heaven as far as material or position or location. It's all the same. And so if we come to faith early in our lives, heaven is the same as if we were to come to faith at the very last breath. It has no effect on God's infinite kingdom and infinite joy and infinite love and infinite power. There's enough for everyone. There is no scarcity. I appreciate this image because it reminds me that it's never too late for anyone. God is constantly reaching out and that no matter what, all persons that come to know God, regardless of when they come to know God, will be there in the same place, experiencing the same joy. Now don't get me wrong. I do think there are advantages to being a cradled Christian as opposed to being a deathbed Christian. I think that as cradle Christians or as Christians who have been a part of the faith for a long time, we get to experience God's joy and God's presence that much longer. And I do think that there are rewards in heaven for our service, but I don't think that there are material rewards like we think of here on earth. But rather, I think those rewards are the relationships and the memories that we have and the stories that we get to tell. I think that those of us who have been Christians all our lives will be able to come home to the kingdom of heaven and we will be able to run to Jesus and embrace him in our arms and we will be excited to tell him about the times where we got to see him here on earth. And in the lives that we got to see changed by his power. And if we had not been Christians for a long time, we wouldn't have got to see those. We, we would have missed out on those miracles and those, those rewards. We would have fewer relationships from our time as a community of brothers and sisters, as a family united by spirit. Not by blood. I think our heavenly rewards for being creative Christians are the friendships and the family that we build with each other here and now. Heaven will be equal for us all. It will be filled with joy. It will be filled with God's abundance. There will be no different houses or better houses, but those of us who have worked the vineyard longer will have so much more fruit that we got to see. So many more things, so much more riches to our lives. We are the people who have had purpose rather than standing idle. If you have been a cradle churchgoer, but not a cradle Christian your whole life, I have good news. It's not too late. It's never too late to experience the real presence of Jesus, to, to see and experience that transformation within yourselves and, and to see it within others. 
you can still have a personal relationship with God and form it now. Something beyond just words that are spoken on Sunday morning. Something that goes beyond some text written on paper hundreds and thousands of years ago. An actual living and breathing relationship with Christ is still very much possible for you. If you know someone who has never set foot in a church, somebody who, who might not even be able to make it to church because right now they're still sleeping off last night. If you know someone like that, the good news, it's not too late for them either. That all the way up until their last breath, they have the opportunity to come and know Jesus Christ. To experience His presence and be welcomed into His kingdom where we can share eternity with them. If you've been that cradle Christian, then I hope that you have got to see God at work many times. I hope that you have seen and experienced stories of Jesus coming to life in the children's eyes and in the child's heart. I hope that you've got to experience the joy of being with someone that first moment that they came to know God. That they came to find peace in God and assurance of God's reward. I hope that you're not jealous of those who are coming later in their lives. But instead, I hope you celebrate them and see them as the fruit of your labors. See them as those who, who may be coming later, but who are also helping to lighten the burden and the load that you have and to be one more member of your family there in heaven. Because God is calling us all into his kingdom. And he is waiting to hear the stories that we have to tell about the faith that we experienced here on earth. Amen. Amen.